All right, so you asked for a video all about temperate dormancy in carnivorous plants. So that's like a lot of words, but basically it's how do you deal with dormancy in carnivorous plants that want dormancy? Those plants specifically being Venus flytraps, and I actually was gonna talk about Saracenia as well, which are the American pitcher plants. So here is actually a big pot of Venus flytraps that I grow in my collection. It's, believe it or not, these are starting to go dormant. I know they still look good, but look at all those black traps. Those are traps that have died back dying back to the rhizome in the soil, that's the beginning of dormancy for this plant. Now, different Venus flytrap cultivars are gonna die back harder than others, and that means that some of them are gonna die back really hard. They're gonna have so few traps. Most of them will lose these big, tall summer traps and just have a low rosette of small traps throughout their winter dormancy period. Dormancy is essential for Venus flytrap, so if you don't wanna grow them as an annual or a short-lived perennial, you do need to do dormancy. And the dormancy period is actually triggered by the shorter photo periods of the sun and the cooler temperatures. So that's what you're trying to mimic. If you live in a zone like we do, zone 9B, you can actually just grow them outside year round and they'll go dormant on their own. It's cold enough because the nighttime temperatures get between 30 and 50 degrees and it's not too cold so they don't freeze over, but it's also got the short photo periods. So there's two problems. If you live in a place that's so warm that it never gets consistently into the 50s or lower at night, you're gonna need to do the fridge dormancy method. Or if you live somewhere where it's so cold, you can't leave them outside, then you're gonna need to bring them indoors to an unheated garage with a sunny windowsill or do the fridge dormancy method, which I'll demonstrate for you. Now, just so you know, they can tolerate a brief freeze as long as the daytime temperatures heat up. So what, what, what do I mean by that? It can be as low as 15, 20 degrees at night, as long as the daytime heats back up to about 50 degrees or more, even 40 if it's going to kind of be warmer the rest of the next few days. But if it's going to stay below 30 degrees consistently, that's too cold for them most likely. Okay, so I have two different things here. I've got a Venus flytrap rhizome and a Saracenia rhizome, just so you know you can use the same method for both plants. If you live in an area that gets too cold or it never gets cold, this is what I recommend. This is a Venus flytrap rhizome. It's actually already started dying back for winter. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to snip back these traps that are turning black already. This is the rhizome. These are the roots. We want these roots and a couple of traps. Next, I'm going to go ahead and take some long fiber New Zealand sphagnum moss, squeeze out the water Wrap the roots in that, then I'll put it in this plastic bag. So seal this up, leave it in the fridge for a minimum of six weeks if you live in a tropical climate or a hot climate. Um, eight weeks would probably be better, and then bring it out and repot it. Or if you live in the area where it's so, so cold that you can't put it outside, leave it in that fridge until the nighttime temperatures are over the freezing point consistently. And then you can pot it back up, put it outside, and it'll be done with dormancy. You can do the exact same method for the Saracenia. Here's a rhizome here. You can go ahead and cut it. Oops, in my bowl. Then I have the roots and the rhizome. I'm gonna squeeze off the excess water in this. Carefully place this around the roots. I'll put this in a plastic bag and put it in the fridge. The only other tip I have for you is go back and check this bag every few weeks or once a month to make sure that nothing is molding or water rotting in here. But the reason we like long fibered New Zealand sphagnum moss is sphagnum moss is generally antibacterial and it tends to reduce mold growth on its own. So it's pretty rare that you see a lot of rotting in the rhizomes during this way. All right, so I hope that helps. And if you have questions, comment below and I can always make more videos all about dormancy for temperate carnivorous plants. Happy growing.